Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. I am so tickled pink that you guys are here in my kitchen with me. Today we are making a delicious cake for a special reason. We're making a chocolate brownie turtle cake, aka it's basically a Texas sheet cake, but it is so good. You don't want to miss it. Come back. Let's run the intro, come back, and I'll tell you why we're making it, why it's special, and I'll tell you a little bit about the cake. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town, see the beautiful world around. Okay, so let me explain this cake. This is one of my family's absolutely favorite cakes. I serve it with a big scoop of ice cream. We call it chocolate brownie turtle cake. Now, I get a lot of comments on that. They say it's not a turtle if you don't use caramel. Okay, my family just does, prefers not to use the caramel on top of it, um, but, but we just kept the name. So. Uh, the caramel sauce I made the other day on the June bug pie. If you missed that video, you need to go look it up. Look, search the Farm and Pastor's Wife June bug pie. Oh my goodness! For no other reason than to make that caramel sauce, it is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. I want you to think of that once you watch it and you see how to make that caramel sauce. I want you to think about serving that on a scoop of butter pecan ice cream. Oh my goodness, that caramel sauce is to die for. So I may, I have a little bit left. We may scoop a little bit on individual people's uh, ice cream and brownie, but in the general rule, we don't use the brownie, I mean the caramel on top of this brownie, and we just kept the name. So there you go. All right, now let me tell you why. Yesterday was June 14th. I, 30 years ago yesterday, I was induced into labor to have my daughter, Caroline. However, she didn't come for 61 hours later, which put her being born on June 16th. So tomorrow is her birthday and we're going to celebrate her birthday tomorrow. She has requested this cake. Yes, I have done it several times on this channel. But you know what? I'm just bringing you along with me every day. And if we have a good recipe, we're going to cook it multiple times. And since I'm just bringing you guys along with us in the kitchen, you get to make it again with me. So we're going to get started. Now, let me say there's several different ways of putting this cake together. Some, and I do it different every single time. Sometimes I put the cocoa and the flour and the sugar. Sometimes I beat the eggs with the sugar but I'm going to do it today like the recipe um, actually is written. So what we're going to do is I've got two cups of all-purpose flour in here and two cups of sugar, and I'm just going to put them, those together. Give that a little whisk and set it aside. If you were using unsalted butter, you would want to put a little splash of salt, like a little pinch of salt in there and mix that in with it. However, I use salted butter, so I, therefore I don't do that. I skip the salt when I have, um, when I use salted butter and I always use salted butter. Okay, so in a saucepan, I'm going to open up two sticks of butter. And we're going to get this melting on the stove. And to our two sticks of butter, we're going to add a cup of water. And the cocoa. So I'm going to get that melting and stirring. 
I'll bring you back in just a second. Okay, so we have a third bowl that we're getting ready to start. <clears throat> in here, I'm going to go in with two eggs. Two eggs in there. We're going in with a half a cup of sour cream. Now I only had light sour cream and I'm going for it and I think it's going to be just totally fine. Um, however, had I had my choice, I would have had full fat sour cream, but this is what I had and it's going to be, it's going to be totally fine. So whatever sour cream you have on hand, use. All right, there we go. And to this, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, not baking powder, but baking soda. All right. So I'm just going to give this a little beat with a hand mixer. All right. We're just going to let it sit right there. I'm going to go check my butter and cocoa and stir it really good and let it cool because I want to let it cool before we add everything together. Not, it doesn't have to cool completely. I just don't want it to cook the eggs. So while I was waiting for things to cool, I was going to go ahead and do some preliminary stuff for the icing, like toast the pecans. Um, if they're going in the oven, I don't, to I don't toast pecans because they're going to get toasted, but these are just going to be sprinkled on at the end. So I was going to toast some pecans. So I got in my freezer and I got out this pack that somebody gave me and they vacuum sealed it and it's beautiful pack of pecans. And look what it says. They're already toasted. <laughs> they're already toasted so super excited about that all I have to do is do a little chopping so okay I'm just waiting for my butter and cocoa and water to cool just a little bit and then we'll put this cake together okay so like I said you can mix this cake up any way you want to I've done it a million different ways I think and it's worked out perfect ever since got my oven preheating um, to 350 I haven't looked to make sure that's correct, but that's kind of like my go-to temperature and I'll check in just a minute. So I'm going to put a little bit of this sugar. Hold on. There we go. Put a little bit of this sugar flour mixture in. And we're going to go in a little bit with our butter and chocolate and water. I don't understand why this cake goes together in the recipe book the way it does. But like I said, it, you don't have to. It goes together just fine any way you put it together. And it works. It, there, it makes no difference. But I just thought I would show you today the way the recipe actually is written. It is a very liquidy cake. Now let me give the sides a scrape here. You want a cookie sheet, one of your, I don't know, what are they, 20 something by 15 by one, you know, one of these, one of these pans. And I'm using a well seasoned one, as you can see. So don't go anywhere after we get this cake made. I wanted to do the cake at the beginning of the rest of the video. For those who are here just for the recipe, um, they don't have to stick around to the end, but we'll, we'll chat a little bit or go out to the garden or we'll do something before this video ends. Let me just 
scrape a little bit more of this out. We'll talk about what's coming up. Uh, we are fixing to, well, we're fixing to sell chickens. And then after that, we'll be going on vacation. So we'll talk a little bit about that and what's gonna be taking place, some upcoming videos I have planned. One is super special. It's been in the making for quite a while, but we'll talk about it after the cake. All right, it does not take much to bring this cake together. It is a super liquid batter. Put a napkin there to catch any drippage. All right, and so I'm just gonna take my, I have sprayed it with my cooking spray, uh, my Joy Bacon Spray. I sat my spatula down before I was done. Now, um, since this is Caroline's cake, we may call her over this afternoon. Uh, no, we won't because I've got to get this video out for you. So um, I'll probably taste a little corner of it for you. Uh, and then you'll have to come back for another video to see her um, actually taste it. All right. We'll wash that up and get it ready for the icing. Okay, I'm just going to get out any bubbles. My pan has been warped, so it's not completely level. All right, it's going in the oven, and I will bring you back um, in just a few minutes when it's done. It doesn't take long to bake. I'll tell you exactly how long when we come back. Just a quick correction before we go any further. Preheat your oven to 400, and it should take about 20 minutes. It may take a little bit longer because I did just set mine on 350, but I've cranked it up. Um, but so you're going to go preheat your oven to 400. It should cook for approximately 20 minutes, but I'll let you know exactly how long in just a little bit. Okay, everybody, my cake is out and yes, you can see it cracked. What happened was I think I turned my oven up a little bit too high. Um, and it rose fast when it cooks fast like that. What happens is it cooks fast. It rises, it drops and it cracks. It was not cracked when I brought it out of the oven. It has cracked since cooling. And so it's gonna be fine. It's still moist, it's still delicious. Um, it's gonna be totally fine. Um, just, I would say, go somewhere between 350 and 400. I didn't think 400 sounded right. So I think I've always baked it on 350, but I was going strictly by the recipe today every aspect of it, putting it together and everything. So, all right, as soon as Isaac gets here, I didn't have powdered sugar. <laughs> I thought I had a whole nother bag, but I can't find it. So I've sent him, he was actually going to the store. So he's picking me up some powdered sugar. As soon as he gets here, we're gonna make the icing, get this cake done. We'll give it a quick taste. And then we'll have a little chit chat. Okay, everybody, let's get this icing made so I can cover up them cracks. It's gonna taste so good. I should have remembered that I don't cook it as high as the recipe called for, but I didn't. I was wanting to follow exactly the recipe. Okay, so I have a two pound bag of powdered sugar here. Um, I only need a pound, so I'm just gonna eyeball. What I do is I kinda look at it I pinch where I think the center is. We just guesstimate. You can do three and a half to four cups if you're wanting to measure it out. All right, 
So I'm gonna add in a little bit over a third of a cup of milk. It calls for a third and a tablespoon. I don't measure out the tablespoon. I just go a little over the third. We're also gonna add in a fourth of a cup of cocoa. Oh, and in there I put a, a stick of butter, softened room temperature butter. Okay, so we've got the pound of powdered sugar, the third plus a little bit of milk, a stick of butter, a uh, half a fourth of a cup of cocoa, some vanilla flavoring, and now we're gonna whip it. Whip it real good. Now, ideally, you want to put this on your cake when it's nice and warm, not hot, but just warm, so it kind of melts and oozes. But actually, I'm glad I didn't do that this time because of the cracks. If I had done that while the cake was hot, it would have just sunk right down into the cracks and I couldn't have covered them up. This way I can cover it up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna give the sides a scrape and then blend some more. Oh look, there's some more butter, get in there. Get in there. See, I am a real cook. I show you my mistakes, I show you the oopses, I show you everything. I don't have a TV studio assistant standing with me. I have nobody in here with me today. It is just me and the camera and you guys. So, um, cracks happen in cakes. And let me tell you, it happens to the best of people. They just don't show it on TV. It happens to them too. Um, it just does. Somebody asked me, Leslie, how do you keep in a pound cake, how do you keep from that sad streak happening? So I, I went to explain, but I said, why do you not want the sad streak to happen? That's the best part. That's what tastes so good. And so, so even mistakes can be a good thing. We're gonna get a little extra icing in these cracks and that's gonna be a really good thing. Now I will cover this up with tin foil and probably stick it in the refrigerator uh, because tis the season for little, um, the, the little gnats. <laughs> and I get them every year, this time of year. All right, I'm just gonna spread this around. How beautiful is that? Can you guys see? Oh, see, I've already covered the cracks. So good. This is, one of, this is what Caroline asked for for her birthday. And what I do is I cut a piece out, we heat it up just a little bit, we put a scoop of ice cream on it, some chocolate syrup. Oh my. It's so good. So very good. All right, I am just spreading this icing out. And it may settle down into some of those cracks, but that's okay, that's okay. First of all, if I was making this for a competition, yes, I'd probably remake it just for looks purposes. It's not gonna affect the taste any at all. Um, but this is my family. I'm even gonna take a taste test out of it myself. Um, I'm not gonna decorate it. So this is just what she wants for dessert. So, um, so we're gonna give it a taste test in a little bit. But, um, and let me tell you, those pecans somebody gave me, oh my goodness, they were so good. I have been snacking out of the bag. All right, 
So I'm going to stop there. So good. Mm. So very good. So good. Okay, so I have my little chopped pecans right here. And we're just going to sprinkle them over the over the cake. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it in the refrigerator without tin foil to begin with and let the let the icing set up and then we will um then we'll give the icing I mean then we'll cover it up and you can actually if you want to take your hand and just dab those nuts down in the icing a little bit okay all right guys it's going in the refrigerator. I'll see you back for a taste test in just a little bit. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that so I can sit down and just talk with you guys. And I'm just going to cut out this little corner right here. Trust me, Caroline will not care. People fuss at me for doing this, but quality control. Look at that. It's thin like a brownie with the icing. Now the icing will be a little bit better once it sets up. Oh my goodness, but this. Mm. That is so good. No wonder she loves this. It's even better fixed the way I told you with the ice with the ice cream, the chocolate syrup. Oh my goodness. All right. It's going in the refrigerator. I'll see you back in just a little bit. We'll get a nice picture of it. And we'll meet in the den and do some chit-chatting. Okay, everyone, I thought I would come out here to the garden and um, it is looking super duper thirsty. And um, I, I have not watered the past few nights and Bryant hasn't watered because every evening they've called for rain and we just, we water in the evening anyway. So uh, we've just decided not to water expecting rain. Well, then the rain never comes. <laughs> So my garden is thirsty so um, yeah we're gonna have to get it some water um, and I think this evening we will do that so I am just out here I have some squash I think that need to be harvested and I'm sure I have zucchini <laughs> I'm gonna have zucchini coming out of the ears um, I am gonna can some zucchini I'll probably freeze a little bit but I do want to can the majority of it just for um, freezer space reasons. But um, I'm going to can it. Um, Rachel over on the 1870s Homestead has a great um, pineapple juice canning of zucchini. And you can just use it in zucchini bread and you can water bath it. So it's super simple. And I have a feeling that's what I'm going to do the most of. But let me get to harvesting i'll see you back in the house in just a little bit okay everyone well i have moved my recliner over here um my recliner has always been right there and um yes i have a pile of trash in the floor that i've swept up <laughs> anyway i've moved my recliner over here at the window and i'm absolutely not sure why i haven't done this before oh i am in absolute heaven so i love it so stay tuned we're gonna come back and talk just a little bit okay everybody so i thought i would come in here and just talk to you for a little bit um the cake is made um i'm gonna it's sitting out over there because i did take a picture i didn't get it in the refrigerator yet i wanted to sit down while 
It's still slightly cool breeze coming in the window. Uh, I'm fixing to have to shut all the windows and cut the air on, which I'm super sad about, but I know Bryant will want it cool in here when he gets home. So, um, and it is getting hot. This week is turning off to be pretty hot. Maybe next week it'll cool back down. And maybe when the sun goes down tonight, I can open the windows back up. Um, but I sure love having my chair over here now. I don't know why I waited so long to do this. But anyway, I thought I'd tell you about the upcoming videos for the rest of the week. Uh, we are getting ready to sell chickens and to go on vacation. So tonight, Bryant and I are going to go to the grocery store. So we'll just share a grocery haul for Friday's video um, and share with you things we're going to take with us to the beach and so forth. And I'll explain how we do the beach stuff. So um, then I, I, I'm going to have to do something with zucchini. Um, as you saw earlier, I have tons of zucchini. And so we're going to have to do probably some preserving, but I'll try to incorporate that in with another video because I know canning is not everybody's cup of tea, but a few people like it. So I'll try to incorporate that in with maybe the weekend wrap up or so forth. Um, I would love to get my children together this weekend, if at all possible, and video a family's perspective of fear and anxiety. Um, if you know, Bryant walked through that several years ago, many years ago, actually, but my kids remember it and they remember it well. So I thought we could share our perspective as family members who walked through that with Bryant. And um, so I thought about that being a video upcoming. Uh, of course, we'll have all kinds of videos coming up and then when we go on vacation, you guys have definitely told me you want us to take you with us again. Uh, therefore, the uploading schedule may be a little different while we're on vacation because I'm not sure how the internet will be and so forth. But we will definitely do that. And what else? And then when we come back, we have some fun videos. Um, we're talking about taking a week out of the month of July and putting a cook, a television cook, or just a cook in general, um, highlighting them for a week. And maybe doing three of their recipes each week. Like week one, Paula Dean. Week two, Pioneer Woman. Week three, so-and-so. Week four, so-and-so. And, -so. and um, doing that. We also have Vacation Bible School coming up, so that may change my upload schedule as well. Hopefully not, but um, I'm super excited about all the things coming up. So, and we'll do another live pretty soon too. So, yeah, it's about time for another live. You guys like the lives. I enjoy the lives because we get to communicate with you guys right there. Uh, I read your comments. I heart your comments. I'm not always in the position to respond. And sometimes I'm reading comments when... I should be listening to something else or, or whatnot. So, um, yeah, I, 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 a lot of times I just get to heart them. Um, I don't always get to respond like I would like to. So when we do a live, I do get to correspond with you guys. Okay, well, I'm going to shut the windows and turn the air on and cool it down in here for when Bryant gets home. So I will see you tomorrow with our vacation our chicken selling our what grocery haul so um, we do buy groceries for chicken selling night and um, because we're we're actually gonna be up two nights in a row all night long so it's gonna be a rough couple days so we'll share that grocery haul with you and I'll see you back here um, tomorrow thank you so much for joining the farm and pastor's wife I'm so glad you're here and I appreciate you more than you know if you'd like to support our channel, please be sure to share our videos, tell your friends and family to check them out, share them on your social media, and watch them yourself. Okay, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. Remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye, y'all.